Hi, this is Matt, and I'm super excited to be joining you for Crack IELTS with Rob's Speaking. Today is your lucky day if you are going to have an IELTS speaking test in the next few months. So if you're having your IELTS speaking test before December the 31st, 2022, you are likely to have at least some of these questions. That's right, we have a full speaking test using predicted exam questions. How do you know what the questions are going to be? You might ask. If you did ask that, that's a very good question. We know there are about 130 different IELTS speaking topics that can be used at any one time. We know these topics because our students um, after the exam tell us which topics or which questions they received. If we have enough questions that are the same, we can say with some degree of confidence that these are the questions that are being used. One thing we know at the moment is that IELTS reuse their topics for around about four months. So today you're going to see some of those predicted questions and some band nine model answers. Hooray! So stick around, let's look at them together. Do you like to wear watches? To be honest, no, I, I don't wear one usually because um, I find them uncomfortable, uh, especially in warm weather. Um, I get a bit sweaty. Do you think a watch is important for you? Personally, no. Um, I, can, I need to tell the time, obviously, to function in everyday life, but I usually use my phone. It's something that I carry with me every day. Um, so yeah, it just takes me a second to take it out of my pocket. Um, so yeah, I don't need a watch. Have you ever received a watch as a gift? Uh, yes, I did. I must have been 21 at the time, and it was as a graduation present. My dad gave me a, well, his very nice watch, which was um, made of white gold. It was quite small, but yeah, quite, quite elegant. Um, I did really like it, um, but the thing is, uh, as I said, I don't usually like wearing watches um, maybe if it's a special occasion, I'll, I'll take it out. I'm, I'm a bit afraid of damaging it or losing it. Um, so yeah, that's the reason why I don't wear it so often. Why do people like expensive watches? Uh, I think they're kind of like cars. Um, they're symbols of status or prestige and wealth. Um, you know, often you'll see people or a suave looking guy on the front cover of an expensive magazine sailing his yacht. Um, it's something that you want to signal to other people that you are successful. Um, so that's why I think they're aspirational products and um, yeah, part of the reason why people are prepared to pay, uh, in my opinion, quite ridiculous prices for um, yeah, something that just tells the time. Now let's talk about dreams. Do you often remember your dreams? I guess if I'm disturbed at some point during my sleep, I'm much more likely to remember uh, what I was dreaming about. Um, like if the alarm goes off early in the morning, like it does most days, um, I am more likely to remember if I was sleeping deeply. Um, sometimes if you need to go to the toilet, um, that can also disturb your sleep and you can remember dreams more easily. Um, otherwise, I guess I don't really remember the finer details. Are you interested in others' dreams? Personally, I think most dreams are just gibberish and our brains try to make sense of the dreams and make them into a coherent story after we wake up. Um, so that's the reason why I wouldn't say I was so interested in other people's dreams um, when they wake up. But if we're talking about dreams meaning goals and what somebody wants to achieve or what they really want to do, then absolutely I find that quite interesting um, because it's a bit of an insight into the person and uh, it helps me understand them better. Do you want to make your dreams come true? 
If we talk about flying, because I have had some flying dreams, I'd absolutely want to make that come true. Um, the dreams where I'm drowning or choking, not so much. Um, if we talk about personal goals and my dreams uh, for the future, of being financially independent, to be traveling a lot and having a really fun life, then uh, yes, absolutely. I'd like you to describe a positive change in your life. You have one to two minutes to speak about this topic, so don't worry if I stop you, and I'll tell you when the time is finished. So, could you please start speaking now, please? I'm going to talk a bit about a positive experience that happened to me um, around about eight years ago. Um, so I remember, yeah, this was in the uh, this was about eight years ago, so I must have been 29. Um, and I moved across the world to Malaysian Borneo from England. I was working in Manchester before, um, but as for why I decided to do it, it was um, perhaps because I felt life was becoming a bit stale and stagnant. I certainly had ambitions to travel further. Um, I'd see David Attenborough documentaries about the wildlife of Sarawak. Um, so I was really uh, motivated to go there. And yeah, I was really yearning for this adventure or excitement, um, something far away. And the job opportunity that it was, was um, mentoring primary school teachers um, who were in Sarawak in a number of different schools. So I had to help them to be able to teach English better. Some of these schools were in the cities and some of them were further out in more rural areas and, and the jungles. So that was something that was particularly exciting. Um, as for you know who I did it with, I, well, it was just me. I, I moved across the world alone at the time. Um, yes, I felt really scared and um, I remember thinking on the plane, ah, what am I doing? I'm an idiot. I just moved away from all my friends and family and going to somewhere I, I know next to nothing about. But overall, it's, um, it was a very positive experience. It's made me a much more independent person, uh, somebody who's able to take risks. Um, it also helped to develop my career a lot because I had to deal with many different head teachers, people from the local government. Um, it helped me to develop myself as a person. And it also had another fortuitous uh, turn of events because I actually met my wife out there. In these last five minutes, I'd like to ask you some more general questions about leisure. Do you think only old people have time for leisure? Not at all. I think most people have at least some leisure time or free time. Um, granted, if you're retired, you will have more free time. Um, but let's not forget children. Um, they're just small people and they tend to have uh, some of the most uh, free time of anyone. Um, and there's a reason that school days are, at least in the Western world, are quite short in comparison to working days of adults. Um, yeah, also even working people, um, everyone has at least some free time. Most people have weekends where they can relax. Um, there could also be some evenings where people can unwind and chill out. What leisure activities do young people prefer? This isn't definitively true, um, but older people, I guess you could say, tend to have um, worse health than younger people. And so they might be more excluded from the very physically challenging activities um, or extreme sports. Um, young people, of course, can do any sort of activity. Um, so older people that I know who are in their 80s, they tend to do things like gardening or gentle walks, um, sometimes cycling. Um, younger people do any number of activities depending on their tastes and interests. Um, but then again, there are also older people that do do very physically challenging things. Um, I was part of a karate class and 
we had lots of um, lots of downgrades, those with black belt and above who were who were over seventy and still participating in tournaments. How do people spend leisure time in your country? In most of the major cities in the UK, you can do it pretty much anything, um, anything from yoga and meditation all the way up to you know skydiving, um, karate, or you know horse riding. Maybe not horse riding in the in the centre of the cities, um, but yeah, pretty much any activity that takes your fancy. Um, but in terms of um, I don't know quantity. I I suppose most people when they get home from work they tend to be quite tired. Um, I think most people I know tend to watch Netflix or just chill out with their laptop. Um, so that would probably be the uh, the most common. A leisure activity, if you can call it that. Do you think leisure activities should not only entertain people, but also educate them as well? Psst, this question is a little bit of a trap. Don't fall for it. Lower level English speakers tend to agree with this question because they think, hmm, education is good. So I think, yes, that was good. But think about the question. It's about leisure. Does leisure always have to be educational? Do you really believe that? Who really thinks that? Remember to answer both sides if you do believe that some people think this. Do you think leisure activities should not only entertain people, but also educate them as well? Um, I think by definition, a leisure activity is something fun to do um, or something that helps to relax you. So perhaps ideally some parents might want those um, activities that their children do in, uh, outside of school time to also be developing them in some way. Um, but realistically, I think downtime is important, especially for children. So no, I, I don't think all leisure activities should be educational. Um, great if they are, but a leisure activity needs to be something that helps you to unwind and you know find yourself again you know even things like playing computer games kicking a ball around the street or you know just staring at the ceiling yeah, i do that sometimes do you think that people today have more leisure time than before some people argue that um, people are busier than they've ever been before um, especially now that they're you know, professions like investment banking, being in law or being a doctor, which requires super long hours, or, you know, the work culture expects that um, you, you work weekends and as much as you can. Um, but I think in modern life, you have more of a choice. Um, people don't have to go into those professions. Um, whereas in the past, people relied on things like subsistence farming, you know, to work, to be able to feed your families. I think there are very few people that absolutely have to work long hours in order to make sure that their families are fed. So in that sense, people have more choice and they are able to work less if they choose to. But perhaps modern working conditions dictate a kind of culture where people are prepared and more used to working longer than before. And I don't think that's so healthy. In general, who do you think has more leisure time, men or women? To be honest, I'm not really sure how to answer that. I suppose it would depend on the culture, the country and the region. Um, but if we just assume that it's Western culture for now, um, yeah, I think things tend to be a little bit more even in terms of gender equality. Um, you know, now both uh, genders are, tend to do, tend to go to work, they do housework, um, things are becoming much more balanced. Um, but I suspect that gender inequality is far from over. Uh, so even in Western nations, I suspect that is women who get a raw deal and perhaps have less leisure time overall um, because of how
household chores and perhaps working as well. If you got some positive ideas about how you could talk about these questions, make sure you don't miss out these next questions, which are even more useful.